presentation contains current opinions of Moe Sansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compact Asset Management, a registered investment advisor, and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice. We make no assurance that Moe's opinions or illustrations will accurately predict future prices or financial markets. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance. A detailed disclosure can be found at the end of the presentation. And now here's Mo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Compact Asset Management Market Wrap YouTube Weekly Update. I'm Mo Ansari, President of Compact Asset Management and host of Market Wrap. You can tune into the daily broadcast every day and you can download the app from the App Store or the Google Play Store and, get, uh, and you can get the daily update, uh, one hour broadcast that I do every single day, downloaded directly to your iPhone or uh, Samsung Android phone. So you can get that every day. Make sure you get that. Simply go to the Apple Store and type in Market Wrap with Mo. Dot com. That's uh, just type this in and you will get the app on there. Don't forget also, please, please, please do this right now. Go to YouTube, select uh, subscribe, and just right there, click right there and click on the bell. So whenever I do an update, you will get notified. Let's start with the market and economic update. We are going to do a webinar. That's what I'm going to do. The two hour webinar that I do every couple of months, I will do one at the end of this month on the 24th. 6 p.m. Eastern Time on just click on the link below. Just click on that and you can register right now. It's free and it's about an hour and a half where we see exactly what's going on with all the markets. We go on the economic update also and I will also answer as many of your questions as I can. So register right now for the February 24th webinar. I'm going to talk about the markets, the pandemic. Obviously, it's a fight between the virus and the vaccine. The vaccine is starting to get the upper hand. We'll talk about that. I'll take a look at the markets. Obviously, we closed at the 10th high for the S&P this year. Already six weeks in, we made 10 highs, new all-time highs in the markets. And we'll take a look at the technical analysis of the markets. So let's start with the pandemic. This is where we were on the 27th uh, of January. That's where we were in 2021. That's where we were for the whole year. We were right up here. And there was good news. We were starting to come down uh, the, in the seven uh, week, uh, the average infection rate. But unfortunately, deaths were still going up. That's what was on the 27th. But here we are now on just uh, coming down and we are coming down fast. That's and the deaths have also started to trickle down. That's all good news. We're starting to get the vaccine. We've got about 45 million people, I believe, that have been vaccinated. I'll give you the number in a second. Now they've also done studies and found that if you only take the first shot, not even the second shot, it, uh, it gives you about 64% eff efficacy against uh, in people over 80. This is before even getting the second shot. So if you've got the first shot of the vaccine, you are uh, getting there. The second shot gives you 95% efficacy. Now, it might be a little less against the South African variant, but it works against the British, the UK variant, and we will get mutations because a lot more people are getting infected as the infections come down, so the, so the, the mutations. The president announced today that he made a deal for another 200 million doses and that we should be getting a lot more of these doses out there in, in just go to your corner and grow, uh, pharmacy and you should be able to get a shot in the next couple of months. And that I think will get us to the end of the virus. We already have about 44 million people, uh, 44 million doses have been administrator, administered already. So we're definitely picking up the speed. We're looking at about a million and a half. Remember the President Biden said that we should be getting 1 million doses a day. So the first 100 days, he wanted to vaccinate 100 million people. Well, we are running at about a million and a half now. That's where we are per day. If we do that over for 100 days, we get to 150 million people vaccinated. There are some people, the anti-vaxxers, but that's a different story. Most of the people want to get the vaccination, and I hope they do for the sake of the country, because the more people vaccinated, the earlier we can get them vaccinated, the earlier we can open up the economy, the earlier we can get back to some kind of normal. We, this was the immunity path. We were below the here. Uh, this was uh, four weeks ago, and this is path to immunity after six weeks. This is where we are after four weeks of, uh, of uh, uh, vaccinations. We're looking much, much better. Let's take a look at the markets. New all-time highs. Um, these, they, they are some bubbles starting to happen 
in this market in certain areas. Reminds me of the dot-com bubble where you just had to have a dot-com at the end of the name. You had to have a pet running around with a dot-com on it. And all of a sudden, uh, it was worth billions of dollars. Well, uh, there was the Dosh, Dosh coin or dog coin. Uh, it was a joke. A Doge coin, that's what it was, whatever you want to call it. It was out there and it was put out and it all of a sudden was worth $10 billion. That's just a crazy number. Why did it happen? A lot of the young kids... They are on Robinhood and they are much more uh, in tune to the, the digital currencies. But I'm not quite, uh, Elon Musk tweeted about it, I'm not quite sure about this as far as the digital currencies go. They've been banned in China. All the currencies that you have, the dollar ends up at a bank or an institution, the dollar that you have in your bro broker, the digital currencies does not reside anywhere. There's nobody who controls it. I, a lot of the countries are, are launching their own digital currency, that, like the digital yuan, which is already out there, the digital rupee, by India is uh, launching that, and those are backed by governments. The digital, uh, this Bitcoin is not, and that's what everybody's saying, the beauty of it is, but the governments hate to give up control over the currency. That is the one thing that, the one thing that worries me. So uh, I think it's going to be somewhere but the problem is now we've got institutions involved in it, but to a, smaller, uh, to a smaller degree. But there's a lot of money that is not legal is being traded on Bitcoin. I think at some point the government might come in and say, enough is enough. We don't want to lose control over our currency. And it is not still a medium of exchange. More people are taking it, but it's not still a medium of exchange, especially when it fluctuates. 10 or 20 percent a year. If your dollar went down uh, a day, when the dollar went down, if your dollar goes down 10 percent in a day, that would not be good. But we did hit new all-time highs today in the market, closed at a new all-time high. So that is why I'm telling people do not overthink this market. No, it can't go up. That's what so many people of you, so many call you up and say, it can't go higher. What is it going to crash? We don't know that. No one does. You have to go with the market. As long as it's going, you have to stay invested, have the right allocation mix, make sure you have the right portfolio mix. Don't uh, get over, don't get greedy at this point in time. You want to make sure you have the correct balance in your portfolio. Problem I see, markets go down, people get too conservative rather than getting aggressive. When the markets go up, people get too aggressive rather than taking some of those chips off the table. You heard me a couple of weeks ago, pruning and planting, that's what we have to do from time to time. We've got our stock that's done very, very well. Maybe you shave off a little bit off the top and replant it into something that you might think is doing better. Uh, market went up because of obviously we're getting closer to the $1.9 trillion of stimulus. Probably will get done. We've got corporate earnings. 80% of the companies that have reported earnings came out better than expected, according to fact sheet. Usually it comes out about 70, we're 80, plus the guidance most companies are giving is also good. Plus, we're picking up speed in the vaccine rollout. All of these things are starting to make the market happy. Also, this uh, week, we heard Jerome Powell say that we're going to continue. He's going to continue uh, to do the asset buying program for an indefinite period of time. He's not worried about inflation. So they, we've got the Fed putting in money. We've got the Treasury and the Fed, the government saying they're going to get the $1.9 trillion done. All of that is helpful for the market. But now... We have to get the economy reopened. We have to get people vaccinated. The more people get vaccinated, more people start coming out, more mobility numbers start to go up. And that's one thing I watch very carefully. How many people are moving around? Once those mobility numbers start going up, that would be a very positive sign for the economy. Let's take a look at the technicals, the language of the markets. Well, I was talking about 4,000 S&P. Well, guess what? We are getting there now. We're 19. We're 39.64 as of the close today. We're just slightly over 34 today. So we're about 65 points away from 4,000. That was a number just a few months ago. Oh my God, 4,000 S&P, but we're there. And if we get an extension on the daily charts uh, of the fifth wave, everything, remember, moves in five waves, one up, two down, three up, four down, and then we get the fifth wave. Uh, extension of the fifth wave takes us to, well, 42.25, it could go there. Uh, support is at the 50-day uh, the moving average, which is 37.59. And then we have support at the 200-day moving average, 
which is right around 3,400. So those are on each one of these lines that you see right here, these uh, green and red lines is one day of trading. So it gives you a so shorter picture of what to expect in the short term. Now we go to a longer term picture where each one of these little lines, green and red lines, is one week of trading. So it goes back a number of years. This was the decline, uh, the bear market last year where we got, went down in March of last year. Then we started wave one to the upside, two down, and we're in wave three. Now we've got subwaves within the waves. You can see these smaller numbers right here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then we come, by and find, come down and get a correction. But the major, the round number is the big, is the major wave. We're in wave three on the weeklies. And that gives us a target again of 4,000. But on the weeklies, we get a higher number on the upside. 4,400 for the S&P. Now, that's a weekly chart. So it, it could be this year or next year that we get there. On the downside, if we see a wave four pullback, before we start going to wave five, we will get a wave four pullback somewhere. Maybe it's between May and September of this year. Sell in May and go away if we go too high in the short term. I don't know when those corrections come. As somebody said, some of the people are waiting for corrections. More money is lost waiting for corrections than in the corrections themselves. People waiting, watching, oh, I'm gonna wait. Market keeps going higher and higher and higher and they keep missing the market. You want to be, remember, it's time in the market, not trying to time the market. Have the right allocation, so you have the correct shock absorbers built into your portfolio so you can handle the volatility and participate on the market on the upside. Uh, support on the weeklies is uh, right about here. And uh, then we're looking at 3,700, 3,600, and 3,100. That's a long-term chart that I'm looking at. NASDAQ daily. I was talking about somewhere around 14,000. Well, we are there now. We're starting to talk about higher numbers now, extension uh, 15,000 and then 16,000. Just about 16, 15,925. Support now is at the 20 day moving average, which is right around, uh, I would say, around uh, 13,000, I think, right around there. Then the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. That's what we're looking at as far as the NASDAQ is concerned. But right now, it looks pretty good on the upside. Again, similar picture on the NASDAQ. We one to the upside, weekly chart. Each one of these ones is one week of trading instead of one day. Wave two to the downside, wave three up. And we'll get fourth wave down somewhere. And this is the support on the fourth wave that we're looking at right there. Then 12,000, then the 50 week moving average and the 200 week moving average. On the upside, weeklies, well, they're giving a number much higher, 16,000. 400 for the NASDAQ, 16,400, 16, right around there. I mean, that is, I mean, a few weeks ago, we were saying 12, 11,000. Now we're talking about 16. Who knows how high it's going to go? Don't argue with the market. Just where it's going, just let it go. Make sure you have the collect allocation and you're participating in it. Gold is disappointing. We could get a death cross. This blue line is the 50 day moving average. This line, this magenta line is the 200 day moving average and they keep coming closer and closer. When the blue line gets below the, the, uh, the 250 day gets below the 200 day, that's called a death cross. We're just hovering right around there. The 200 day and the 50 day are about the same. Support is this November low, which is around 1750. If we break 750, 1750, then there's really no support until we come way down here. Why is gold with all the stimulus that is supporting the gold market, but we're also looking at interest rates going up. Interest rates go up, that uh, bonds compete with safety for gold and people say, well, I'm not getting any money in gold, I'm getting a return in the bond market. As interest rates go up, the dollar goes up and that puts pressure on the gold market. And gold has been wobbly. I like to see it get above uh, the 1850 area, the 200 day moving average. One of the markets that I talked about a few weeks ago Last month I showed you, last week, the monthly chart. Here's a weekly chart. Again, one, each one of these lines is one week of trading. This was the high that we made, and finally we broke out above it, right here. And that's emerging markets of what we're seeing. So it is a nice breakout. I've talked about emerging markets the last six months. You should have already added some emerging markets to your portfolios and some small cap. I mean, small cap is up about nearly 16% this year. 
The NASDAQ is up about nine and a quarter, three quarters. S&P about four and three quarters. So Russell has done very well. So have the emerging markets. They're breaking out to the upside. And here's the weekly number way above, about another 40% higher than where we are now. So it, it, they could go up for a period of time. Same thing with the Russell. We've seen a nice move to the upside. It's been, uh, this is the small cap Russell 2000 index. It has just exploded to the upside. Support is right here, the 20 day, then the 50 day moving average. Target is about 2,500. We're at about 2,200 now. So a week ago, two weeks ago, we were at 2,000. So that would be a big move from where we are. Don't forget the webinar on the 24th. I'm going to spend about a couple of hours with you going through all the economy, all the charts, all the details, and all of your questions. We'll go through all of that on the 24th. Don't register right now just by clicking on the link below. This is the update for you for 2021. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful long weekend. Stay safe. I will be back with you next week. Until then, good trading. This presentation contains the current views and opinions of Moise Ansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compact Asset Management, a registered investment advisor. The views expressed are current only as of the date of this presentation and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice and nothing is personalized to any investor's individual circumstances. Compact Asset Management offers investment advice only after entering into an investment advisory agreement and gathering client-specific information about goals, objectives, financial status, and risk tolerance. This presentation uses terminology associated with technical analysis and provides charts to illustrate some of the concepts discussed. Technical analysis is a security analysis method with the goal of forecasting the direction of prices of securities or market indices through the study of past market data, primarily price and volume. We make no assurance that past performance or the use of technical analysis will accurately predict future prices. Further, a risk of technical analysis is that overfocus on historical patterns could lead to ignoring or downplaying security-specific concerns, overall market or sector concerns, or other factors because we assume inaccurately that historical patterns will repeat themselves. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance.